The hallways of Grayskull Base bustled with traffic. A team of support staff pushed handcarts stacked high with supply crates while a pair of astromech droids passed in the other direction, chattering and whistling back and forth to one another in binary. A team of technicians were making repairs, their welding torches burning bright blue as they replaced a panel in the wall. Colonel Boland stepped to the side, pressing up against the wall as a fully loaded supply cart passed him, nodding to the supply clerk guiding it. Behind the supply clerk, a familiar dark-haired pilot dressed in a bright orange flight suit appeared. Colonel Boland! Kellen, good to see you. I couldn't believe it when I heard that you made it out. Well, it turns out that these local yokels are good for something after all. And that bucket of theirs can actually move. YT-1300s can be full of surprises. I'll tell you when I... Yeah, yeah, we all know when you were there on the Falcon once. That ship gets faster each time you tell me about it. Hey, you want to see their 1300? I'll be stepping on board before we escort them out. You think they've modded it? Bet my life on it, kid. Come on, check it out with me before pre-flight. The hangar bustled with just as much activity as the hallways of Grayskull. A GR-81 that Bolin recognized from the battle at the customs checkpoint occupied more than half the hangar space. Teams of droids, mechanics, and everyone and anyone who wasn't busy with essential work were busy offloading the ship's cargo. Bolin and Tellen made their way across the hangar, passing underneath the ship's belly. Think the imps will buy their story, boss? Probably. There's a good amount of pirate activity in this sector. It's not uncommon for a ship to get attacked at a nav point if they didn't bring escorts. Sometimes they get jumped even if they do bring escorts. There's reports of that kind of thing all the time on the security net. Well, they did a good job holding until the rest of the shipping queue panicked back there. I'd buy their act based on that. Oh, go to A middle-aged man with dark, slick back hair and a gaudy chain hanging around his neck raised his hands in an exaggerated greeting. Bolin suppressed a groan. Mr. Voss, so good to see you. The pleasure is all mine. I was nearly overcome with grief when I saw your ship destroyed. Happens all the time. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm sure. Well, I am so glad that you were rescued by uh, your um, associates. I didn't catch their names. I didn't give you their names. We rebels compartmentalize our information, Mr. Voss. Nothing personal. No, no, of course. We really must keep everything close to the best, eh? It would be a shame if the Imperials obtained information vital to the rebellion. The location of this base, for example. That would be tragic for both of us. Who would be left to buy weapons from you? Oh, yes, yes. Quite tragic, yes. Well, I wish you the best of luck in your future missions, Colonel. Do be more careful around merchant vessels. Everyone seems to be arming themselves in these troubled times. You can count on it. Good day, Mr. Voss. Voss bowed dramatically and held it until Bolin returned the jester. With a flourish, the man strode away, shouting at one of his crew to unload the freighter faster. Seems like a nice guy. Oh, he's real nice. He's very popular with the Nilgard Fangs, Closed Fist, and the Golden Branch. All the nicest pirates and gangsters, really. Well, unless you know someone else willing to sell us 20 proton torpedoes, we're stuck dealing with them. On the other side of the transport, the hangar was tightly packed with ships. Green-trimmed X-Wings from his own Killjoy Squadron were crammed in with Y-Wings from Whitecap Squadron and A-Wings from Stormcloud Squadron. There was hardly enough space to move between ships, which made Bolin nervous. If there was an attack on Grayskull now, their response time would be abysmal. Only the two alert fighters on standby at the edge of the hangar and the pair of ships on combat patrol, all A-Wings from Stormcloud, would be able to engage effectively and quickly. The rest of Grayskull's defenders would be tripping over each other to get out the door. There were automated and manned defense emplacements both on Grayskull itself and on smaller asteroids nearby, but those would only slow down a determined assault so much. To buy the time that they would need to actually evacuate Grayskull, Bolin knew that they'd need to have every ship they had out there as fast as possible. Amongst the snub fighters was Captain Gethus's ship, an unassuming YT-1300 freighter. It was in excellent condition, with none of the normal signs of wear and tear one would normally expect to see on an old YT. The ship had a fresh coat of paint, 
The trans-peristyle viewport gleamed, and everything gave the impression that the ship had just rolled off the factory line. Well, she's certainly no Millennium Falcon. Do yourself a favor and keep the comparisons to the Falcon to a minimum, Tolan. I don't think Captain Gessels will appreciate them as much as I do. They made their way through the closely crowded snub fighters and walked up the ramp to the freighter. The interior was as immaculate as the exterior. No sign of shoddy repairs, spills, or even the smell of lubricants and ozone that so normally define the interior of a light freighter. Instead, Bolin noticed the pleasant smell of some sort of food. A bored-looking marine leaning against the curved siding of the corridor gave Bolin and Telen a nod as Bolin led the way into the ship's common space. Captain Gethis and her crew were finishing a meal. A green-skinned Rodian was washing a bowl in a small sink, and a Sullustan in dark gray overalls picked at a bowl of noodles at the table. Gethis bolted upright from where she sat with her own bowl when she saw Bolin and jabbed a finger at him. You've got some nerve, Colonel. I don't know how many times someone has saved your life, but usually the polite course of action is not to detain them in their own ship and have some goons cut out their navicomp. This is Lieutenant Tellen. Lieutenant, this is Captain Gethis. Nice to meet you, Captain. Lieutenant. Again, sorry about the navcomp, Captain. It's standard operating procedure. We don't usually have visitors here. Oh, your paranoia is touching. I trust that our technicians installed a new navcomp? I installed your navcomp. Thanks so much. Uh, the colonel tells me your ship is surprisingly fast. I'll interpret that as a compliment. It's hard to tell from the exterior, but it looks like you've swapped the stock sublight drives out for... I'm guessing SS-3120s? Hmm, good eye. You're slightly off. They're ID-410s, Indo drives copies of the 3120s. You're familiar with YT-1300s? Oh, I suppose you could say that. I grew up on a refueling platform over Kuat. I saw a bit of everything. You've got a splendid little ship here. <laughs> <laughs> She's called the Splendid Wind, Tellen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> a good name. Norik, why don't you show Lieutenant Tellen around? Juska, Nedamanu. That'd be great, thanks. We've got five minutes until pre-flight, so don't take too long. Yes, sir. Venna, please run a check on the Navicomp interface. After the others left, Captain Gethis brought her own bowl to the sink and began rinsing it out. She gestured absent-mindedly for Bolin to sit. Don't think that you can butter me up so easily by having your friend compliment my ship. Not even a little? Well, I am really sorry about the Navcomp and the detention. I know that must not feel so great. And you didn't tell anyone that I'd let you fly the wind here. Only my superiors. Well, I appreciate that, at least. As someone who came a little too close to being captured by the imps, I can tell you that sometimes it's better not to know some things. Trust me, it takes some weight off your mind. Personally, I know too much. What does that mean? Protocol is that if I'm captured and can't be rescued, then rebel operatives are authorized to take the shot. I'm too dangerous to fall into Imperial hands, on account of the operational knowledge I know. I was going to save them the trouble before you picked me up. I wasn't going to mention the business with the blaster. We saw through our scopes as we were approaching you. So, you should know that I really mean it when I say thanks. You're welcome. But I'm still pissed off about the armed goon in the hallway. Another protocol. Nothing personal. If I thought you were too dangerous, there'd be more than one. Right. Just don't forget that I'm fighting the Empire, too. Even if I haven't officially signed up with your rebel so-called alliance, we're on the same side. Of course. Usually, people on the same side trust one another. You wouldn't be here if I didn't trust you. <laughs> that just might be true. After finishing with her bowl, she opened a compartment above the sink and stowed it securely inside. She looked over her shoulder at Bolin, and with a bit of a shrug reached a little deeper inside the cabinet and pulled out a blaster. She held it out to him, handle first. You need a new blaster. You know, the so-called alliance can get me one. Mm, the 
this one's probably better. No doubt, but I shouldn't. I wouldn't feel right taking your, uh, dishware holdout blaster. Take it, or I'll be offended. Well, if you put it that way. Bolin took the blaster from her. It was a DL-22 with a subtle modifications to the gunmetal blaster shroud and the actuator. Light, but deadly. Bolin hefted the blaster in one hand and checked the safety. Gethus closed the compartment and crossed her arms. I appreciate it, Gethus. I should get going, though. I've got to get my pre-flight started. I'm flying a loner for the next few days. Good luck out there, Bolin. I won't always be around to scoop you up. You too. All right, get going. I'll make sure your friend doesn't stay too long. Bolin nodded to the Marine on the way out of the splendid wind, slipping the new blaster into his hip holster and adjusting the straps to secure it tightly. Stepping down the ramp, the familiar oily and ozone smells of the hangar deck filled his nostrils again. Colonel Bolin! Among the tightly packed snub fighters, the Mon Calamarian pilot waved. Bolin started making his way to him through the ships. Good to see you, Knowles. You're sure you want to take this mission? I don't mind the extra flight time. No, no. I want to see them back out. Commander's prerogative. Of course, sir. My ship is here. I'll give you the walk around. Bolin followed Knowles around his X-Wing as he walked him through the quirks of his ship. There wasn't anything too surprising. A stabilizer that had come loose a few times. A power coupling that had been running hot and a repulsor unit that was slightly underpowered. Knowles still looked uncomfortable when he finished the walk around. Thanks, Knowles. Try not to worry too much, okay? I am a pretty good pilot. Of course. So you in a few hours. Hopefully we have this freighter out of here by then. R2, make sure you take care of the colonel, all right? Knowles and Bolin exchanged a casual salute, and the Mon Calamarian left to lend a hand with the unloading. Bolin put a hand on the X-Wing, hesitating for just a moment as a wave of dread and self-doubt washed over him. Gritting his teeth, he hopped up and swung a foot into the foothold on the fuselage before pulling himself up into the cockpit. No space for the ladder, R2. You all set back there, or should I call over a tech to secure you? Great. Run pre-flight with me, please. Yes, I'm sure I want to fly. No. Check that stabilizer again, will you? Well, I'll let you in a little secret or two. When you fall off a Ronto, the best thing to do is to just jump back on. A Ronto is a big, um, reptilian... Hey, listen, R2, that's not really important right now. The point is that if you hesitate, if you think too long about a setback, you can become a permanent mental block. The best thing for me to do is to get back in the cockpit and fly a mission, all right? Well, maybe it's just a thing with organics, okay? Great. This is going to be a milk run anyways. I'm not worried about the mission. I am a little worried about that power coupling, though. Make sure you keep an eye on it for me, all right? Perfect. Killjoy leader, Killjoy 2. Standing by. 2. Leader. Acknowledged. Splendid win. Killjoy lead. What's your status? We're ready to launch, Killjoy leader. Follow us out. Warm up and stick close. Without a ground controller to guide him, he brought the X-Wing up slowly and carefully until he was well clear of the ships beneath. Hands steady, he retracted his landing gear and throttled his engines to minimum thrust creeping forward out of the crowded hangar. Tellen followed him out, followed closely by the Splendid, which settled into formation in between Bolin and Tellen. All right, Splendid, stick close and keep an eye out for the rogue rocks. Our flight lanes are pretty good, but collisions through rocks that are hard to predict. Acknowledged, Killjoy leader. Bolin forced himself to ignore the growing pit in his stomach, throttled up and led the way out into the asteroids. It was a familiar route now, after months of operating out of Grayskull. He recognized the asteroids as he passed them, and followed the concealed nav buoys through the cluster by second nature, keeping him well clear of proximity mines and auto guns that had been seeded throughout the asteroid field. If those defenses worked as advertised, 
his ship wouldn't be targeted anyway, but neither he nor any of his pilots trusted those systems as much as the engineers who had installed them. The asteroids thinned out as they approached the edge of the field. Stars shone more brightly out at the edge, where the asteroids and the dust of the field weren't so thick. R2, have you got those jump coordinates ready? Great. Go ahead and transmit to the Splendid. Splendid win. Killjoy leader. My astromech is transmitting coordinates for your jump now. Please acknowledge receipt and relay micro jump readiness. Coordinates received. Ready to jump. Lead two. Standing by. Jump on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. The stars stretched from pinpoints to streaks as Bolin engaged his own hyperdrive. The jump was short, only a few seconds long before they reverted. A quick check of his scanners showed Talon and the Splendid right where they were supposed to be. Jump complete, Splendid. I'm transmitting the activation codes for your NAVCOM. Stand by, Killjoy lead. <laughs> Well, R2, if they had a functioning nav comp at the cluster, it'd be pretty easy for someone to plot our coordinates if they got their hands on that computer. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what your failsafes are for. We can't let those coordinates fall into the wrong hands. We'll have half the sector on top of us before we knew what was happening if those Imperials got those coordinates. <laughs> yeah, that would be bad. Killjoy lead, splendid. Never comp is up. We're all set here. Good to hear, Splendid. Thanks for the lift. Sorry for the trouble. We owe you one. You owe me one, Killjoy lead. Bolin put a hand on the new blaster in his hip holster and watched as the freighter angled away from them, fixing on some distant destination briefly before disappearing into hyperspace. Let's go home, too. Right behind you, leader. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to help us continue improving and expanding our channel's content.